Hello and welcome to A Game of Ice and Fire. When last we left off, the expedition to investigate the shipwreck discovered bandits looting the corpses of pirates they found on the beach. After killing the bandits, a strange box with a long piece of shiny black rock inside was discovered under the body of a septon who had had his tongue removed. The bodies were left to rot on the beach and the party made their way back to Skrell Castle. Lady Anera, Martan's mother, greeted them at the gates and informed them that Lord Skrell would like to meet them in his solar after they refreshed themselves. Martan spoke briefly with his sister Lorena and invited her to join the meeting as well. In the solar, they informed Lord Baylor of all that had transpired on the beach, including Martin's choi or Martan's choice to execute the last bandit instead of letting him take the black. Lord Baylor, instead of seeming shocked or upset by this news, seemed impressed. Martin also showed those present the black rock they discovered on the beach, and Maester Hargreave was immediately able to identify it as a glass candle, something once used by sorcerers in old Valyria to see and communicate over vast distances, but which is now inert and used by the Maesters as a lesson that some things are impossible. Martin was allowed to choose what to do with it and decided to keep it. Lord Baylor then moved to the next piece of business, that of the construction of a mine and the complications surrounding it. Lumber is sparse on Skrell Island, so it must be sourced elsewhere, and the closest forest is the Otter Wood on Arlen, another island of the Stepstones, ruled by Lord Cameron Tide. During the War of the Usurper, Lord Cameron and his three sons were part of the fleet that assembled at the Blue Wharf, and Lord Baylor warned that they may hold him at fault for them never entering the fight. Martin was chosen as the emissary, since his standing as a member of the House Skrell would hold more weight, and to give him some real experience in politics. Iron Hand and Thali were chosen to accompany him, as well as Nicholas and Sertarin for Loren. And that is where we left off. Bringing back in the players. Um, we will just pick up kind of right at the end of this meeting. So if there's anything that someone wishes to finalize before this meeting is over, I see Thali is already, yes. Josh is already raising his hand. What's up? I know because of the way that we ended the last session, uh, that, um, that Martin is going to try and walk off with his sister. Um, so was I near his sister? I, you, you said that I you... noticed... Yes, you noticed something particular about the way that she absorbed the information about the dragon glass. Mm-hmm. Yes. So um, you were sitting across from her. Martin was sitting next to her. So yes, you would have you'd be across the table from her currently as the meeting is kind of wrapping up. And how would Thali address her? What what's what's her like? Um, what is she is the daughter of the Lord. She's the heir apparent to this house. So I mean, would he call her you my lady? You call her my lady, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it, right before, like, right as the meeting adjourns uh, and before Martin, if you don't mind, I'm not trying to steal your thunder or anything. Um, I, I would like to say um, my lady did something about the uh, dragon glass uh, strike something in your memory, in your thoughts. I forgive me for overstepping, but I seem to notice a a fascination, or a uh, seem like maybe a lack of fascination about the dragon glass. Roll. Uh, give me a, just a general persuasion test. Just, Great. Just, just, yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Tell so you what, if it's not shooting a bow, I'm not good at it. So, persuasion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure right. you are average at persuasion. Which is, no, I, I mean, mean, I'm the the DC on this one isn't high. I'm just curious to see how that I got an does. eight. An eight? An eight. Okay. Um, yes, uh, stepping away from the... Well, are you trying to have this conversation at the table just, with everybody? Or just, just uh, like, off to the side? Let's say, like, you know how you're, like, at a lunch meeting at a lunch table and then the meeting gets adjourned everybody kind of stands up and, like, walks and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to, like, catch her right before she started to leave. Okay, sure. Because um, I noticed... I guess I noticed Martin heading toward her and I don't want to intrude in whatever business they have. Yeah, um... Yeah, she, she looks at you and... 
Uh, yes, Dolly. Um, I. Hmm. It's as though I've seen it before. That's all. It looks very familiar. The, the candle itself. Yes. Um, Sally just kind of shakes his head and uh, says, uh, "Thank you for your time, my lady. I hope to have not disturbed you on your way out." No, not at all. Um, thank you for taking an interest and for taking care of my brother. I very much appreciate that. <laughs> Thali laughs and goes, He's a good kid. Uh, really good kid. My lady. Well, don't tell him that yet. <laughs> he kind of bows. Yeah, she does the same. Nods, kind of uh, gives you a a fairly informal kind of curtsy as uh, as an exit. And yes, anything else before we leave? I'm going to approach her. And... All right. Yes. Um, as you see, Thali have a few words with her. Um, they kind of end their small conversation and, and go their separate ways, you're able to approach her also as she exits. Sister, if you wouldn't mind joining me in my chambers, I'd like to speak with you privately. Yes, yes of course, Martin. Um, right away. And she kind of follows you kind of uh you know off to the side um letting you kind of lead the way to your room at whatever pace you wish um and it's it's a short walk the the chambers are not very far from the lord's solar your chambers in particular are, are fairly close um so after just a few minutes of walking you are able to make your way back to your room which is something that you haven't seen in a few days, um, but it looks like it's you know, the same as you left it. Um, what are you, uh, just as me curious, what are you doing with the glass candle? I am going to bring it with me mm -hmm. to my room. Okay, cool. So yes, you are bringing that kind of just under your arm. Um, fairly big box, but it is not heavy. Um, and you are able to bring that with you to your room. All right, and you are able to enter the, um, you, you can close the door, leave it open. She is going to enter after you. Yes, um. Uh, I'm going to check the hole to see if anybody followed us. Okay, make an awareness notice check. Seven. Seven. Um, looking down the hall, uh, I mean, you are seeing everybody kind of go back to their daily routines. So you see several people um, going down the hall, and you also notice uh, a few people in the um, kind of orange and blue uh, livery of your house, guards, you know at several points along the hallway, but it doesn't look like you have been followed at all. Okay. And nobody is, like, pressing their ear to your door or anything. Nobody's that close. Nobody's eve Nobody appears to be eavesdropping. Okay. Well, then I close the door behind me. Okay. And I assume I have, like, a table in the room. Yes. Yeah, you would. Like a desk or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very um, common for, you, you know, the lords and ladies to have a uh, desk for writing letters um, or for studying. Um, it's, yeah, that is a common enough thing, yes. Um, you setting the candle there? I am going to open the case and set the candle on the table. All right, yeah, and you see um, it's kind of... 
once you take it out of the box, um, it is very sharp. So you're having to handle this very delicately. Um, the edges are, I mean, it is obsidian. This is, you know, very, very sharp edges. So you're handling it delicately, but you see at the base of it, there actually are kind of these little offshoots that kind of would help it stay upright and not fall over one way or another. Um, and looking at the, the top of the candle, where a normal candle would have a wick, um, there is nothing. It is just a little divot in the top end of the uh, of the obsidian. Um, there is no sort of wick, no visible way of lighting this thing. Um, you you are at a loss for how something like this could have ever been lit. Um, and you are able to set it on the desk, and it's fairly steady. It's, it doesn't seem to be rocking or anything. Um, it looks to be undamaged if, like I said, rough around the edges and kind of jagged. It doesn't look like it's been broken or harmed in any way. Um, and it stands three feet tall from where your desk is. So it is a, a tall piece of glass um so on the table it is taller than on the yes on the very on the table it is taller than you are yes um yes absolutely and this is the f you know the, you took it out or at least opened the case at the meeting so this isn't the first time that she has seen it um but this is the first time that it's kind of been you know set up and you can see that you know she's a little bit in awe of what she's looking at um Especially after being given the description that you guys all were in the solar. It's, uh, it's quite big, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, I wonder how they made it. I don't know. I, I'm curious curious how it worked, magic, but really, I want to know how you knew that I was supposed to go. It's a dream. Did you have... Tell me, though. I told you about mine. Tell me about my dream. Tell me about your dream. Well... This isn't the first dream I've had quite like it. But it was the first time that I had seen you in it. And I saw you bending over a boat and finding a box and opening it and seeing a large black rock. I didn't know then what it was, but I felt that it was supposed to happen. And it since you were there, that you were the person that must find it. I've dreamed of you since then, but it was a different, felt different somehow. I feel like I saw you on the road, sleeping by a fire. Yes, and? I, there wasn't much else. Um, Everyone looked to be asleep except for, um, what's his name, the, the one with the coin armor, uh, Iron Hand, um, I think he was watching, um, but I, 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 that might have just been wishful thinking, I'm not sure. I'm glad to see that you've returned safe. It, yes, nothing quite like the comforts of home, and... I walk over and sit on the bed and I'm like looking forward to a good night's sleep this evening. Yes, yes. Well, we're glad to have you back, even if it is only briefly. Um. And like I, I look over at the candle and I look back at her. Do you think you? Do you think you can light it? I don't know. Um, I mean, we could 
try. There's... We could try lighting it. What? What? Um, do you have any way of lighting a fire in here? And I... I look around and I'm like... Per yeah. Perhaps... Uh, uh, what time of the day is it? This is, you have just kind of had the meeting around noon, so you, this is kind of early afternoon. Um, at this point, go ahead. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, do I have any windows? You do, yes. All right. Okay. Um, like, I, I think I have something, and I, I go to my things and find by Irish lens. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and, you do have uh, that. So I, I'm like, uh, uh, pick it up from the table and set, set it on the ground. Okay. Yeah, she eagerly goes and picks it up um, very gently, again, very sharp, um, but sets it down kind of uh, in, in line for you to be able to try the, the mirrorish lens with the light, and I think she kind of gets the idea of what you're doing, seeing you grab a lens, knowing what they are used for. Uh, I, I have no uh, flint and rocks, but something tells me I just might break it. And <laughs> I, so I go, maybe this, maybe this will work. And Take the lens, and I'm like wiggling it, like with the sunlight, trying to get it like just right. I'm like try to angle it so that the light. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yes. After a few seconds uh, or a few moments, you are able to concentrate the beam that you find coming through the lens um, to that kind of divot on the top end of the candle. And you hold it there, and you hold it there, and you hold it there, and nothing happens. Nothing, it doesn't even appear to get warm. Not only is there no light emanating from it, nothing is lit, nothing even warms up a little bit. This is, I mean, it's, it's molten rock. And you are you're heating it about as hot as you could with the tools at your disposal, and it is just doing nothing. Or appears to be doing nothing. I, I take the lens away and I reach my hand out and grab the top of it. Yeah, it is cold, uh, cool to the touch. It's not cold, per se. Um, and as you reach out, uh, Lorena kind of grabs for your hand, um, but when she sees you don't flinch or draw back from any sort of heat, she kind of scrunches her eyebrows and pushes your hand away and touches her own hand to it so that she can see, and, ah, frozen fire indeed. Doesn't take any of the heat. Strange. Yes, I thought that might work. It was a clever thought. I don't think I would have thought of that. Clever enough to work, though. You think? Well, Maester Hargreave did say that every maester in the Citadel tries to light these at night before taking their chain. If the smartest There's people no in the world haven't been night. able to... True. That is a good point. Maybe we'll just have to keep trying. Perhaps. Well, sorry to have wasted your time. If you do have any more of those dreams, let me know. Uh, I, th I don't want to call them uh, visions or, or omens or anything, but very curious 
that you and I both had dreams involving yes. the same subject, and it played out as it did. Well, this isn't the first so, time that I've had that kind of a dream. I've also dreamed of a woman disguised as a knight with a white tree on her shield, and of a man with silver hair that found her and loved her. I've had another one where I saw um, another knight slay a monster with two heads. And I've seen a queen walk into a burning pyre and walk back out again. But I don't know what any of those mean. None of those were of people I recognized. This was the first time that I've seen someone that I knew. Uh, uh, after she says uh, that, uh, I would like to see if I know any, like, house heraldry. Or okay. Um, that involving a tree. Like a white yes, tree. A white tree. Um, go ahead. Let me see what this would even be. It is probably going to be under knowledge. Um, no. This is a status test. Bonus dice in... You can do... Okay, so you can do status with any bonus dice in tournaments, should you have anything like that, or you can do a knowledge education test. I will let you decide what kind of a test you want to make that without looking at your sheet. Go. And now I'll look at your sheet and see what oh. it is. <laughs> I will go with status. <laughs> okay. Fourteen. All right. Um, a white tree. Let me... There are, a f I want to say, a few different houses with white tree sigils. Um, let's see, the Blackwoods have a dead weirwood tree. Um... As far as women who have dressed as knights, that's a little unusual. There was, I think most recently, a tournament at Harrenhal that you would have heard of before the War of the Usurper uh, in the year of the False Spring in which a mystery knight entered the tourney wearing the shield of the Laughing Tree, which was a weirwood tree painted on the shield. Um, they were known only as the Knight of the Laughing Tree, but this was clearly a, a man entering that tournament. Um, 14. Um, you would also know that, um, this knight, um, unseated several men, or I think it was one of the men of the King's Guard and their squires, kind of humiliating them. Um, and that this made King Ares, who was at the tournament, uh, kind of surprisingly, he was not in, expected to be there, but kind of showed up last minute. Um, he got really pissed off at this mystery night for shaming his Kingsguard, and wanted the identity revealed of this mystery knight. Um, so he sent his son, Prince Rhaegar, to go and find this knight, but they were not successful. So, the identity of that mystery knight was never revealed. That's the closest approximation to any knight with a white tree on their shield that you can really remember off the top of your head. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, uh... Hmm. S strange. I don't think I've had any dreams 
as interesting as those, certainly not that I can recall. But please don't hesitate to tell me about anything that springs to mind uh, before we depart. I Go ahead, um, well, okay, Af after saying this, um, especially with the encouragement that you just said, uh, she looks like she's holding back something. She looks as though she's kind of stopped herself from saying more. Is there something else? Something you don't think you can tell me? Go ahead and roll a persuasion test for me. Nine. That's exactly what you needed. Um... Well, those dreams have been the fun ones. Seeing a man slay a two-headed monster and a queen walk in and out of a flaming pyre. But I've had some dreams that have scared me, yes. I've dreamed of a dead man with the head of a wolf seated on a throne hosting a feast of corpses. Um, I saw another king gored by a pig. And I did see father in one of them, except he had slitted eyes and fangs that dripped venom. I don't know what to make of those, but those scare me. And have you ever dreamt of a man with red eyes? Man with red eyes? No, I, no, I can't say that I have. Why? Did you dream of someone with red eyes? In in my dream, though. Well, I can't say if it was a man, or. person for sure, honestly. I just remember seeing them. Hmm. That's why Mr. Hargreave told you about the red eyes in the room. Yes, I... I... I don't know everything. Interesting. Not yet. No, I haven't had any dreams like that, but... If I do, I will be sure to let you know. And, 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 and I will let you know as well. Thank you. And, um, try not to share this with too many. I don't want people worried about my sanity. If uh, it's all oh, the same no, you, Your secrets are safe with me. We are family. Thank you, brother. Okay, well... I've... I've... Minor things to attend to, so... I shall see you... When right. next we meet. I will see you then. Goodbye, brother. And she... I see her, see her out of my chambers. Mm-hmm, yeah. You walk her to the door and out. Uh, her chambers are not very far from yours, so she just walks down the hallways a little ways and, and, and goes back to her rooms. Um, and you are left to your own devices. Um, that being said, everyone right now is going to have the next couple of days to prepare for this voyage. So if there's anything that you want to do either in Skrell Castle or around town, if there is anything that you wish to buy with the money that you guys have or any sort of preparations that you wish to make, you have a couple of days 
Um, so if you will just kind of let me know how you would like to spend those couple of days, we will go from there. So that was Martan for, for the moment. So yeah, let's let's skip time. over to let's just go next to uh, Iron Hand since we haven't really done anything with him yet today. What would you like to do for these next couple of days? Um, the first thing that Iron Hand is going to do is, uh, I think, see um, see about investing some of this. Uh, this silver that he has in um i don't know if if our castle can uh, make uh, castle forged items or not there is not currently a smith there that can do that um functionally speaking the way that you could attain this for your house just mm -hmm. for everyone um you would need an artisan so you can pick that up with an investment of, I think, 10 wealth or 15. I'm not sure exactly. It is, it is some sort of wealth investment that you can use to gain an, the use of an artisan, which can, you can get artisans of all different shapes, but a, an, a smith artisan would be able to forge castle forged weapons. Okay. okay. But you do not currently have access to it. That'd be a good thing for us to invest in, for sure. Yeah, I think down the line that may be a, a worthwhile path to take. Um, with that in mind, um, what Iron Hand is going to do is uh, make his way to um, the market uh, outside of Skrull Castle, actually take the time and, and head down that direction since... Presumably that's where we would be sort of launching from for this voyage anyway. Yeah, so outside of Skrull Castle is the town of Trader's Rock um, with its kind of different boroughs. There's you know, the Red Bridge and Ghost Bridge and then the actual Trader's Rock center. Um, Trader's Rock is where you're going to find most of the normal markets, trade goods, things like that. There are shops mm. that sell all manner of things. Um, as far as where you're leaving from, you're leaving from the castle and you are going down the road to the Blue Wharf where you will take a ship. That ship will take you over to Arlen. So you're not leaving by ship from this castle, but you will be leaving kind mm. of through the town, yes. Um, so yes, you are able to make your way out to the markets out in front of the castle. The, the castle gates kind of open on this large square that's paved, and um, across the way you see the market. It's the middle of the day, so the markets are fairly busy, um, with people kind of going around and getting their, their meals and shopping for things. You see you know, textile places, you see arms and armor, you see... You know, taverns, people getting drunk. It is, you know, it's a it's a normal afternoon in the town of Trader's Rock, and you are able to make your way out to the market to wherever you wish. Um, the first thing that Radiva is going to look for is, uh, uh, especially after you know the what happened um, out in the. The wild lands out beyond the castle you know, in the southern part of the island and uh, knowing that um, you know he will be back on the water soon and traveling between islands and having to keep uh, Martin safe um, he's actually going to look for uh, his own pair of far eyes to purchase and tuck into his kit uh, before they get to uh, underway all right let me I know that there's a trade goods thing here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a port near the Narrow Sea. Let me see. I think some of these things are considered rare and would not be able to be found sure. in the average port. Um, there they are. Okay. I don't... Yeah, okay. Well, I think it's just reflected in the price here. Um, mm -hmm. 
However, with the fact that you are so close to Essos and the east, um, the mirish lenses that are used in making Far Eyes are produced in Mir, which is mm. one of the cities of the Triarchy, Mir, Lys, and Tyrosh. Tyrosh mm. is another island of the Stepstones. Lys is an island to the south of the Stepstones and kind of over more to the east. And then Mir is, I believe, on the mainland. This is all on the map that I am not even referencing. Um, Mir is, yes, on the mainland, kind of into the east. Um, so quite close to you. So yes, you would have access to this item. And yes, I will say that for the price listage, you can have that. So um, you you are able to find that for the price of 300 silver. If you just want to mark that off, you can add a Far Eyes to your inventory. Sure do. And the way that I had that uh, used when he used it was that you're able to add two bonus dice to your awareness notice test to see anything at a distance. So Great. that'll that'll be how that works going forward. Excellent. I love that. I made it up once, and that's that I'll stick to that that rule from mm -hmm. here on out. <laughs> I appreciate the consistency. Mm -hmm. Truly, I try. <clears throat> uh -huh. Great. And then, having done that, um, Radova will mark all of that down before I forget, because I know I will. Um, the other thing that Radova would like to purchase uh, before he goes is a high quality bottle of rum <laughs> okay um i don't know if they have do they have alcohol prices in here i don't know that they uh, do it is under known poisons uh, alcohol <laughs> that's that's <laughs> where i was looking yeah i think um, it's just like, like a that. bottle of like that would be considered like a bottle of rubbing alcohol. Right, though. I don't yeah. think that's like... Which, uh, it's all right. not exactly what I'm looking so, for. So, all right. For a, a, a high-quality bottle of rum is what you said, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Let's the, call the it... toppest of top shelf that he can find. Toppest of top shelf that he can find. All right. Mark off for that another... Ooh. Mm, let's call it another 50 silver for just the finest thing that you can find. Okay. Not the finest that exists in all of the world mm -hmm. here, but the best that you can find around here. And it is pretty good. I mean, it, the the Blue Wharf, you know, is um, set up into a couple of different districts. And there is a the, the district that was founded by Inera Foros, uh, Martin's mother is a upscale area um high quality things coming in and out of there and rum is one of those things you can also get arbor golds and dornish reds uh, a plenty but like fire you know fire water you know you're you're, mm, yeah. you're you, that mm. stuff is we, we know what Rana was looking for here. And uh, yes, and yeah, and for fifty silver, you're able to find a an excellent bottle of rum. Okay, all right. All, um, not all of the rum is gone here. Not all of it. Yeah. Um, with that done, with that that shopping sort of out of the way, um, Radova would then like to spend a little bit of time. Um, perusing the market just uh, sort of you know sort of just just browsing but more so than that um kind of asking uh, some questions here and there about the tide family and about the history between the skrulls and the tides in a, a very you know what what happened what you know about the tides over across the way 
Okay. Have you heard? Okay. Let me get you to make. Um, this would be a persuasion test. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that your uh, your character is probably the worst at that out of uh -huh. anyone yeah. that has ever been rolled up. Oh yeah. I think you have a penalty dice, right? I sure do. I have yeah. a flaw in persuasion. Yep. Um so let yeah, let me get you to make that that persuasion test. Great. Um so you're rolling two dice and dropping the lowest one. And you know, because we just talked about this, uh, I believe I can spend my destiny point to remove that penalty. You can. Mm -hmm. Great. I would like to do that. I'd like to just spend that right. for this session. Then you have spent your destiny point, and it... Um, yeah, so for this test, you are rolling two dice and keeping the result of both. Cool, oh, that's a nine. A nine? Okay, that's actually not bad. <laughs> I'm four. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, that, that you wouldn't have gotten much without <laughs> the benefit of nope. that, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, the best thing would have been a yeah, five is not going to do any good there. Um, but with a nine, that's actually uh, better than average. Um, so after some perusing and some convincing and just using your knowledge of the area finding the people that would have had the most contact with the people from that island um you are able to glean that um while uh in the so uh, what i've gone over before is the fact that mm -hmm. um they were here for their part in the war of the usurper but that they left and after the essentially after the war was over um and went back to arlen where they have stayed and you have not or the people from skrell island have not really had much contact with them since then um traders and other people visiting the island because it is another island um there is a port on that island called the Silver Moon Harbor. Um, so anyone that has visited the Silver Moon Harbor would be able to tell you that um, if they were there maybe 10, 15 years ago, it used to be a really bustling port, lots of activity. Um, but that, yeah, in recent years, it just hasn't, it hasn't been the hopping place that it used to be. And it's, you know, it's gotten a little dingy, not quite as pleasant, some more kind of just generally unsavory folk, and just, it seems like it's not been taken care of that well. Um, but, you know, it's still a place that you can go to to make some money, so if you're looking to, you know, make some coin here or there, or if you're, you know, it's a port, so you're, you're selling goods, they need food they have the the otter wood as a major part of the island um there's also the a ruin otter wood. Mm -hmm. is that just the name of the woods or is that a specific kind of wood or? No, it's the name of the wood mm -hmm. the, the otter wood okay mm -hmm. yeah that's just the name of the wood um yeah not a not a specific type of tree or anything other than just what they call that yeah, forest sort of fascinating um and hmm. let's see yeah so that's that's kind of what you gather the the and and specifically for house tide um it you really don't pick up much about them specifically like the they they seem to have, you know they they don't seem to visit the ports more you know they're kind of seen as a as reclusive you know, not super into the business there anymore, um, and that's what you glean with your with your nine persuasion roll. Okay. Um, yeah, with that done, uh, Radiva will travel, you know, back into the castle with his uh, spoils and 
make his uh, next couple of days a lot of uh, preparation and a lot of, you know, out practicing with um, some of the, the guardsmen and uh, Folly and the, the archery bunch and just sort of prepping to get on the boat and head out. Okay. Cool. Thali, what are you doing? Um, Thali is also going to go and visit um, the market. Uh, Thali, over the few days, is going to do a little bit of carousing. Um, you know, drinking and, and chatting with people about just anything. Um, a little bit of gambling. Not a lot. Not Not enough to get in trouble, but just like... He's got a little coin, and he's like, I can burn a little bit and still be okay. Um, and then he's also going to go to market and try and find a musical instrument to, to play. Okay. There are a few listed in the book with prices next to them. If you have looked at those and you have one picked out that you would like, you can just tell me um, and you can mark off the price there. But if you have a, because you are a musician, if you would like to say look for a specific kind of instrument let me know i think that's not listed uh Sally would either buy the fiddle that's there or would try and buy the loot mainly because he doesn't want to have a bow so that he's got like two things going on he just wants to kind of play something so if he could find a loot that would be what he would be after okay pretty pretty small like gourd loot maybe okay uh yeah um i in all of the books i can't remember if there are loots i can't okay i don't think that there are but this is a fantasy world and i'm not gonna t say that you can't <laughs> have a loot because loots are in everything so yes you can find a loot i will say you can find a loot um that looks to be in pretty good shape gourd loot um for 15 silver yeah uh, Thali would turn that over. Mm -hmm. And he's he's not any he's not any good. He just wants to kind of like have something. I, maybe it's like to keep his hands busy, like yeah, while he's something like, to noodle on, like, something fire to, or whatever. to work yeah. his dexterity a little bit. Yeah, finger dexterity. Yeah. yeah okay. Um. So so Thali's gonna subtract fifteen silver, uh, uh, and get himself a loot. All right, cool. Yeah, and that you um, can, yeah, loot and case if you want to say that, but it comes with protective carrying case. You're not having to worry okay. about that. It's not an SKB case, but, you know, it's oh something. That's enough for me. <laughs> um, yeah, and so other than that, I mean, uh, Thali will probably go to, uh, you know, a tavern here or there, and if he hears musicians, like, speak to him on breaks or whatever and just, you know tell him like hey i um i i just bought one of these things and i don't really have any you know any any dexterity well he does have plenty of dexterity but I, I don't have any um skill with it but i've been interested in in learning you know just kind of like trying to chat up people who are musicians and trying to get to know more people essentially okay yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead and roll a just a general persuasion test, just to get the the gist of how all that goes. Oh boy. Okay. Mhm. Mm You're not gonna have to spend a destiny point to get your two dice, but I know that you. I'm pretty sure you only have a two in there, so. Yeah, I got a five. Probably not gonna be much better. All right. Yeah. Um, Big old five. Yeah. In in going around um, to the different places. Um, You know, buying drinks, doing a little bit of gambling, coming in with a loot. Um, you get the impression that, for the most part, most of the musicians are just kind of humoring you. They see you as a person that has got a little extra cash and spent it on a musical instrument um and now thinks that he'll be great with it and is just kind of looking to you know show off to the ladies and stuff like that so they'll, they'll humor you they'll show you a couple of chords but after a second you know they you know they don't see it as a an extremely worthwhile endeavor um, uh so so anytime he has that interaction um 
just so that you know, uh, and that we know, like Thali's not Thali's not in it for any sort of fame. The only thing that that Thali wants to get like truly better at is his skill with the bow. Mm -hmm. So uh, Thali's really just in it to just kind of goof around. So any time that he gets to the end of that conversation, you know, he feels that kind of tug of weight or whatever. Uh, he always offers to pay them always to just to like pay him for their time or essentially like he'll go up to the, the tavern owner and be like, is his tab covered? You know, if it's not like, let me cover it. If not, or, you know, if his, if you're paying for his drinks, let me pay for his meal. He tries to kind of maybe, maybe slyly, maybe not so slyly return the favor in a way. Okay. Um, Go ahead and roll one more dice. Uh, what, what were your two dice that you rolled before? What were the results? A two and a three. A two and a three. All right. Go ahead and roll as if... Roll one more dice and treat that as a bonus dice. So if it negates one of the the, the two, I'll, I'll see if that changes the result at all. Okay. <laughs> it was also a two. <laughs> it was also a two. Okay. Um... Yeah, uh, some of the musicians, uh, you they see your offer of coin and they're like, no, no, it's fine. I, you know, it it seems as if it's no skin off there, you know. But they're they're a little bit more appreciative now that you're showing that you're not, uh, you know, just trying to learn a quick trick to show off. That you're actually, you know, willing to put money behind it. They're they're appreciative of that at least, and you get the sense that in those interactions that those people get it, but they're still not really willing to put in the extra time to, to do that. Um, and anyone, you know, it, so in general, it kind of smooths things over with, with most of them, but you, it's still kind of hard to get somebody really invested in trying to show any more than just a couple of little technique things here and there. Yeah. Um, uh, and so any any time that conversation ends, whether or not the money changes hands, he always says thank you for your time, and he always finds a way to get that money to them somehow. So like I said, either buys their room for the night, or their drinks for the night, or their like if they haven't you know bought a meal or whatever, like pays the the owner to just like when they come up for a meal, it's like oh it's already taken care of. He finds a way to like get the money to them somehow. Okay, cool. Um. All right, I will keep that in mind. Is there anything else that you want to do while you're around town? Nah, he's just gonna he's just gonna carouse and 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 talk to people about the. Uh, um, he he will ask people about uh, if they've ever been to the southern coast. Just like, have you ever been to the southern coast of Skrull? Just kind of like curious as to if anybody's been down there. Um, yeah, almost no one that you run into here has. Um, you get the impression that there is, not only is there not really a reason to go down there, there, you know, it's, there's no town or anything down there. Um, you also get the impression that it is considered a little dangerous to go down there. Um, because of just pockets of bandits and outlaws that have made the caves down there their home. Um, you ran into a group that is probably from there, and right. your best guess is that they were they had a camp somewhere down there, but that they had left to take care of the people that were on the beach. Um, yeah, so you don't really run into anybody who has traveled down there. Um, you get, yeah, you get the impression that it is. Uh, there's really no reason to go there, and that it is a, a bit of a dangerous trek to anyone who wants to travel through there. Um, no one here yet is talking of any sort of mine, so there is no talk of they right. being becoming any sort of a community down there that is not you know that's not news that hasn't been made public yet um so yeah in general the 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 feeling that you get is that it's a fairly dangerous place and that there's not really a reason to go down there okay yeah that's it i mean just carousing uh playing around with his musical instrument and uh uh doing a little gambling 
All right. Um, in being kind of with the people, um, carousing, making friendly, uh, um, I will grant you a bonus dice to your next or to a persuasion test that you choose in the future. So okay. if you just want to add like a, I don't know, this isn't a narrator, uh, what do they call those? Narrator's inspiration, bardic inspiration, <laughs> narrator's, narrator's inspiration. <laughs> um, just add a bonus dice to persuasion that you can use on a persuasion test in the future. Okay. Doesn't have to be the next one, just has to be a persuasion test in the future. Okay, cool. Thanks. Mm-hmm. All right, and I think that finishes it up for Tholly, right? So mm -hmm. I would bring it back over to Martan, but he is currently absent. Was there anything else that anyone wanted to do right this minute? I know that Iron Hand said that he was going to be doing some practicing. Yeah, mostly, um, <clears throat> you know, getting used to the weight of this uh, fancy new stiletto that he has found. Um, but, you know, it's it's been a couple years since he landed at Skrull and started working for the castle, and so uh, a lot of what he's doing is uh, getting his sea legs back, so to speak. He's doing a lot of uh, um, slightly more... Uh, I, not that, that Radova is particularly uh, interested in uh, honorable or uh, upfront dueling fighting tactics but um is definitely spending a, a lot more time with with some of the guardsmen and, and particularly with um the the knight that will be accompanying them on the trip whose name is you know, fled completely from my brain sir darren for lauren yes sir darren mm -hmm. for lauren um is uh you know doing a little bit more um focused uh, practice with some of the close quarters things that might be useful on a ship or that uh, you know are, are more likely to be functional against uh, say pirates or uh, you know, any sorts of fights that they may get into on their ship or even on the docks of this port that they're going to that is uh, a little bit more rough and tumble than it was once upon a time okay yeah yeah and and in practicing with Sir Darren um yeah, you, you not only get kind of work with close quarters hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, his weapon of choice is a two-handed greatsword, and he wears half-plate armor. So you're also kind of getting used to or reacquainted with um, where all the joints connect and where best to slip in your stiletto or your, your dagger or what what have you um in order to make those kill blows um yeah. working you know trying to figure out how to move past the gigantic greatsword that's taking swings at you uh, and move in to get close enough to slide a stiletto under like an armpit armor you know plate or um through a gap by, behind the knee or wherever you can find these little gaps and slits um so yes, for your next combat, or for, I will say for your, yeah, just add like I gave Thali, um, add a bonus dice that you can use on a, uh, on on a combat roll of some sort, um, not towards like initiative, but towards mm -hmm. an actual like, to hit, um, roll. So however you want to notate that, just add a bonus dice to use in combat at some point. Nice. All right. All right. And that finishes it up for Iron Hand and Thali. Martan, is there anything that you wanted to do over these next couple of days? Why, yes. <laughs> Why, yes. All right. Um... How long has Sir Marcus Cantell been in service to my house? Let me pull up his stuff. It's 
That's a hell of an opening question. Yep. Let's see. You said Marcus Cantel, right? Correct. He is the master at arms. He is the master at arms, yes. Um, don't think I wrote it down here. Um, he has been in service to House Skrill. Where is his phone abilities? There we go. Um, he has worked here for your house for about the past 10 years. Uh, he's in his early 30s, so he took up service here as just one of the household knights and was later promoted to the position of Master at Arms. Um, so he served as a knight for, you know, four or five years and then was elevated after that to the position of Master at Arms. Um, the Castellan, Sir Clace Harker, was wounded. Let's see, that was, um, yeah, he was maimed. Um, he was the Master at Arms until then. He was maimed by pirates. You have seen him walking around on crutches. Um, what happened was he took a mace to the knee that shattered his knee and it had to be amputated. So after that, he was no longer able to serve as a master at arms to train the soldiers of House Skrell. Um, so he was moved over instead to become the Castellan who kind of oversees the, the larger defenses and, you know, all of that kind of thing. So um, he was the master at arms up until then. Okay. Uh, and how old is he? How old? How long has he been in service to my house? Sir Clace has been in service for a long time. He came here with your grandfather, Victor. He was, okay. he served him on the Grey Swallow. So he is so one of the, kind of the he was... original, he's he's an OG Skrellite. I don't know. I don't know okay. what you call so it. So he was around when we didn't send out ships? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. Sir Marcus Cantel was not, but Sir Clace Harker was. That is correct. Um, okay. Well, then, I would like to find... Is he a sir, or is he not knighted? Well, both of the people I was just talking to you about are both sirs. They're, there's Sir Clace Harker, the Castellan, and Sir okay. Marcus Cantel, the Master. Then I would like to find Sir Clace Harker. All right. Um, the Castellan usually keeps uh, his office in the gatehouse to House Skrell, or to the, to, to the Skrell Castle. So you are able to find him by walking out of the Great Hall across the yard to the gatehouse and find him kind of seated behind his desk. Um, you see his crutches up against the wall, papers kind of in, in an organized mess uh, on his desk, and um, you see various books that look like they haven't ever been read and or you know, pulled from the shelves in, in many, many years. Um, and, uh, when, when you enter, um, Sir Clay's kind of looks up and says, Oh, yes, uh, my lord, come in. Is there something I can do for you? Yes, uh, indeed there is. Um, d do you know, was he at, was he at that meeting at the table? No, he when? was not, he was not present for okay. that meeting. All right, well, then I will follow with that. Uh, Yes, I, I have been tasked by my father to negotiate with Lord Tide about uh, procuring some lumber. I, I do know that our family history with them is not, shall we say, the best, but since you were around, I would like to find out what you may know that others might not know of the situation. Well, um, 
I remember Lord Cameron. Um, he certainly was able to rack up quite a tab with some of the uh, taverns here, but he made good on it. He did leave with a bit of a temper. Um, he was quite upset with how the war turned out. I think he was looking forward to the glory that he and his sons could earn in, in battle supporting the king. Um, I know he was upset that we took that chance away from him. But if you're... But if I'm being honest with you, I think we might have saved a lot of lives by not going to war. The Targaryens were defeated at the Trident, and King Ares was butchered in the throne room by that King's, that Kingslayer Jamie Lannister. If we had been at King's Landing, we might all be dead now. If we had been on the Trident, we would be dead or defeated. It's hard to say. It's hard to say whether we could have changed that outcome, though, and that may be something that he is still dealing with. I can't say. We haven't had much contact with him these past 15 years, so it's good that you're trying to make contact again, and I think that is a wise move on your father's point. So, do you think... Do you think there was anything that... could have happened... that we didn't actually have control over? I know we didn't send... all of the ships... but is it really all our fault? Who can say? Your father's indecision may have saved as many lives as it could have cost. Um, who's to say whether we could have changed any sort of outcome in the war? At the very least, we lost influence at the Dornish court because of it, and it hasn't made us any allies in the Narrow Sea. I, I, I don't know. I can't say as to the right or wrong of it. But it happened, and we'll have to make the best of it, I think. He said he likes to drink. Oh yes, I can say that for a certainty. Um, that he did. He was always drinking with his men. They seemed to love him for it. I can say that about the man. He did have the admiration of his soldiers. And what of his sons? Mm, his sons were growing up to be little images of him. His, um, let's see. When I saw them, they would have been 16, 15 maybe, the older two, and then there was, um, there was a young one that wasn't quite fighting age yet, but that he brought with him as well. Um, he might have been 9 or 10 at the time. Um, as such, I can't really say much about their personalities. Um, nine-year-old boy is, as many nine-year-old boys are, uh, looking to get into trouble and quite often succeeding. The older two were, um, had the, had the makings of knights, although I, I think they were still waiting to earn their spurs. Um, that was 15 years ago. They, they are, um, likely all 
adults now, um, I... The times may have changed them, it's hard to say. You'll have to let me know what you find. See how they turned out. Yes, I... I, I believe I shall do just that. Uh, thank you, Sir Clace. I... I, be I believe you've, uh, given me all the information that you can. Uh, if anything comes to mind before we depart in a few days, let me know. Of course, of course, my lord. Yes. Get out of there. Okay. Yeah, you are you are able to exit. Is there anything else that you want to do over the next couple of days? I would like to speak to my father. Okay. You uh, make your way to your father's solar where... He is now alone, just you and him. You're able to make your way in, and he says, Ah, yes, My son, come on in. Is there something that I can do for you? Perhaps I am trying to prepare for the trip. And, well, I'm trying to acquire all the information I can to best negotiate uh, with the tides uh, for their lumber and perhaps to find a manner in getting ourselves back to at least the cordiality if not good graces uh, what can you tell me about what happened back then? And don't just give me what everybody knows. If there's, well, dare I say it, someone else to pin the blame on, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't. Go ahead. Let's see how have this one pulled up. Hold on. Pull up his sheet. Go ahead and make a persuasion test. Uh, let's see. It, I don't know if you have any bonus dice and convince. No, you don't. Uh, yeah, just a general persuasion test for me. I'm not going to make this like a full-on intrigue to try and get information out of your father, but just make a test and we'll see what happens. Ten. Ten. Um, all right. So he kind of, um, you see him kind of retreat into his, into his memory for a second and come back with... As far as the blame, if they want to blame someone for inaction, I think I must accept that. That being said, I... I did it to save lives. I know that it'll be hard to see that now, but that was a war that we weren't going to win. I knew it then, but I can't, I can't prove it now, obviously. That was 15 years ago. I certainly couldn't prove it then. But that wasn't a war that we were going to win. Even if we had won a battle at, say, the Trident or the Blackwater, or if we had somehow prevented Lord Tywin from sacking King's Landing, or 
prevented Jamie Lannister from slaying the king. I think at least Ares's reign was over. I will say I do wish I had seen his son sit the throne. But I think King Ares's time was writ on the wall. So, for what it's worth, I will accept the blame for my inaction because I know that in the end it saved lives. It may have saved mine, it may have saved our captains, our soldiers' lives, our allies. And if that's the shame that I have to bear in order to know that their lives are spared, then I will. I don't have a problem with that. Father, I wish there were something else you could have told me. After speaking with Sir Clay's Harker, I don't get the feeling that this Lord Cameron Tide cares about something such as that. A man who seems to be all for the glory and for the story can't see lives saved. Lives lost, his own or his son's. They make a good story, they make a telling, they make a show. They're not often reasonable. Do I have that about right? I would say so. From what I know of the man, yes, I would say a story is likely what he was after. Glory on the battlefield. Tales to tell his sons and grandsons years later. Being robbed of that isn't the end of the world, though. So. No, but he, I'm sure, is not happy finding himself languishing in obscurity. What family would? I dare say he isn't. But perhaps you can mend the rift that I have created. I, I doubt I could. My words would fall on deaf ears, but perhaps yours won't. Oh, one more question, Father. Yes. As you say, you stopped us from sending ships to save lives. What led to that decision? Did, did you know something that maybe they weren't privy to? Did you receive a raven days before or, or anything, anything to give the idea that you knew it was going south. Well, I don't know if that's an idiom they would use, but you know. <laughs> going poorly. Um, let's just say it was a strong conviction. I saw the. Well. Do you know what happened to. Lord Rickard and his son, Brandon Stark. Do you know what set the war off in the first place? Um... I don't know, Drew, do I? <laughs> well, if you, the, the player, know this answer, which you probably remember this part, um, then, yeah, I would say that your character would 
know it. If you don't remember the specifics of it, I will have you roll a knowledge education test. Doesn't appear to be in my notes. So, I guess I'll be rolling. All right, go ahead and roll a knowledge education test and let me know what you get. Twenty. Twenty. Okay. Um, so you would remember that essentially what kind of kickstarted the entire war of the Usurper, the war that destroyed the Targaryens in Westeros, uh, or just kind of finished them off, I guess. There were there weren't many left at that point. Um, was that um, the was the abduction of Lyanna Stark Lyanna by Stark. Rhaegar Targaryen? Um, yeah, yeah. He abducted her, and when her f brother found out about it, and uh, he lost his temper and went down to King's Landing to demand her release. Uh, King Ares uh, did, was not uh, appreciative of this at all. Um, this was his son that was being accused of abducting and raping a woman. And he wasn't about to hear of it. So um, he summoned uh, Lord Stark, Lord Rickard Stark, to answer for his son's crimes. And... Um, when Lord Rickard arrived in King's Landing, he demanded a trial by combat. Um, traditionally, there are trials by combat where you can essentially uh, proclaim your innocence and defend that with your body by fighting to the death the, or, or to the surrender death or surrender, of the other person. Um, either one of you may name a champion who can fight in your place, but it is a matter of to the death, so it is a, it is a significant ask if you're asking someone to fight on their behalf. Um, that's traditionally how a trial by combat is done. Um, when Lord Rickard demanded this trial by combat, the king granted the request. Um, so Lord Stark armored himself for battle and figuring he was probably going to fight one of the king's guard. Um, but instead, they took him to the throne room and suspended him from the rafters while two of King Ares's pyromancers kindled a blaze of wildfire underneath him, um, the king told him that fire was the champion of House Targaryen, so Lord Rickard needed to prove himself innocent of treason by not burning himself alive. Um, so while he was suspended over this fire, his son was in a, um, essentially in a, in a device that wrapped around his neck and tightened as he struggled. So he watched his father roasted alive, and in the struggle to free himself, he himself strangled to death. And that is how Lord Rickard and Brandon Stark died at the hands of King Ares in the throne room, in front of king and court and king's guard, it was a very gruesome public trial turned execution. And um, so you know the fairly well the specifics of that event. That's a, you know, that's 15 years ago, but that is a pretty major event, so you're pretty familiar with it, yes. Okay. Then, 
Yes, Father, I am aware of the grisly details. And you're aware of what they called King Ares? Uh, the Mad King. The Mad King, yes. I've also heard him called King Scab in other unsavory company. Whether or not he was mad, he was cruel. And his time on the Iron Throne was drawing to a close. And I could see that. So I did what I thought was in the best interest of not only our family, but the families of all those gathered in our ports. I'm not particularly proud of that decision, but neither am I ashamed, if I'm speaking honestly in private. So the Dornish called your family, they called the banners for Dorn. Um, the fleet that would have been gathering in your port would have been an assemblage of all of the houses that live in, the st in and around the Stepstones or kind of on the coast. Any sort of fleet that the Dornish would have would have been gathered at uh, the Blue Wharf. Um, the Dornish land forces were led by Prince Lewin Martel, who was a member of the King's Guard. Um, 10,000 Dornishmen rode with him to fight the Battle of the Trident, where he was killed and where the Dornish suffered a defeat. Um, that was really the only part of the war that the Dornish were involved in was sending those 10,000 men to the Battle of the Trident. And after the defeat there, the army scattered and made its way back down to Dorne over, you know, a period of time. Um, but as for the Dornish strength at sea, it was never witnessed. So the, the, um, the death of Prince Lewin and the defeat of the 10,000 Dornish isn't specifically held over the heads of House Skrell, but it's, you know, kind of strongly hinted that a lot of people feel like it could have changed either the Battle of the Trident, or it could have it could have bolstered the forces there, or helped ferry men away. It could have done something there. Um, also, the City of King's Landing was... Um, sacked by a person who used to serve as the Hand of the King. It was sacked when Tywin Lannister or same, said that he was there to help Ares, and once Ares let him into the city, his men, you know, ransacked it. Um, with his son, Jaime, ultimately killing the king. Um... And your fleet, it would have would have likely been there to support King's Landing at at the uh, at that place. So the sack of King's Landing is more what people would attribute to the lack of support from the Skrells. Um, it's seen that you okay. you probably could have helped more there. Um. Okay. Well, log logically speaking. Uh would there have been a way for us to be there in time to have prevented that from happening? Logistically, yes. The fleet could have been at King's Landing when the sack took place. Um, <coughs> like I said, the king let Lord Tywin and his army in. They opened the gates to them, so would your forces have been able to stop that? Um... I mean, probably not. Um, okay. You know, they it, 
in all likelihood, they would have just been part of the carnage. Um, so, it's hard to say. But they would have, you know, they could have been out. They could have maybe provided King Ares with an escape. They could have, you know, if, if things had been different, maybe Prince Rhaegar would have survived. You know, it's just, it's, it's hard to say 15 years after the fact when it really wasn't clear at the time. Okay. Alright, well, um, I shall do the best that I can for you and our family. Uh, I'm sure you will. Thank, thank you, Father, and I kind of leave, but it's obvious I'm a little, I'm disappointed. Make an awareness empathy test for me, real quick. Okay, okay. Eleven. Eleven. All right. You don't really pick up anything extra. Um. Yeah. It, on your way out, yeah, you, you're a little frustrated that you're not quite getting the information that you feel is there somewhere. Um, but it, you can kind of tell that you're not, you're not really convincing him at this moment. Uh, and you make your way back to your quarters. Is there anything else to do over the next couple of days? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, everybody else. No, that's good. <sighs> okay. I would like to go see Maester Hargreave and Nicholas. All right. Easy enough to do. Their hall is essentially totally opposite the Lord's Solar. Um, so you make your way down the long hall. You pass by the the Lord's quarters, the your own quarters, um, going on down to the Maester's Tower at that end of the castle, and you walk in on Maester Hargreave and Nicholas, kind of, you know, doing their normal daily routine, going about and you know doing readings, examinations, and kind of talking to each other about what they're what they're finding. Uh, when you walk in, uh, oh yes, uh, young Lord Martin, uh, welcome, welcome. Come on in, take a seat. Is, is there something that we can do for you? Uh, uh, yes, um, I'm checking to see if you have gathered all the information I requested about our family and the tides and. Yes, um, of course. There's all um... of that. I, I am not coming across anything. I am going to find helpful when speaking <laughs> with these people well Is um there... there isn't much here but um we've got their heraldry and um, brief history it uh, it seems as though um he is also of uh, ironborn heritage um their sigil is a blue chevron sinister which uh, uh on a red field um so I'm sure you'll see that when you approach. Um, he married a uh, Lord Cameron, that is. He married a merchant from the uh, city of Pentos, and um, they had three children. Um, but after the War of the Usurper, we have... Uh, kind of lost contact with them as it were. Um, there hasn't been much news out of the house since then. Um, I'm afraid I can't provide you with too much more information than we were able to give you in the solar, I'm afraid. Pentos, you say? Yes, uh, the the free city of Pentos, um, kind of uh, midway up 
Essos. So I think it's it's a little bit north of Mir. Where's my map? Um, yeah. So there's Mir, then uh, north of that there's the Flatlands, and then there's Pentos. Okay. And my mother is what Tyroshi? Yes. Tyrosh, the people and that dye their hair all sorts of weird colors. And stuff. Colors, yeah. Uh -huh. And and beards, and mustachios, all that good stuff. Uh, Yet another example of that dragon show taking all the color out of the story. <laughs> Quite literally. Unbelievable. Yeah. Neither one of you would happen to speak any Ventoshi, would you? Don't think so, but let me double check. Um, let's see. Uh, Nicholas does not speak Pentoshi. He does have a little bit of Carthine knowledge, though. And Maester Hargreave uh, speaks a little of the old tongue of the First Men and the Giants. So, but neither of them speak any Pentoshi, no. Or Tyroshi or any of the other cities that are a lot closer than, <laughs> than either Any of those of two. Any of the other Oshis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of <laughs> of Oshis. Yeah. But Lossal! No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, neither of them speak any Pentoshi. Yes, I can't find anything of use. Ugh. <sighs> Do any of y'all, I guess, ugh, I guess languages are taught specifically by, uh, orally, there's no, like, written method of learning a language if you don't already know it. There, I mean... Every one of these languages has a written form, so there is, I mean, just like our languages that we speak, there is a written form of it. Um, it is much less common in this time period for people to read and write. Uh, yeah. So just in game mechanics, the way that this works is if you don't have a four in a language, you can't read it. So, these people have spoken knowledge of these languages and could probably, you know, they could probably make sense of a written form of it if they had enough time with it. Um, just based on, you know, understanding phonation and how the words sound and what the, what the you know, the letters mean. Um, but, uh, yeah, so most of you don't read and write 
you speak the language, you understand it's spoken, but you, you know, unless you have a four in language, in a specific language, you, you really can't read or write it. Um, the only possible exception to that really is Martan, though, because of your... I think you you have polyglot, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you're... Let me read the specific... Or if you just want to read the specifics of it. Um, um, specifically how it reads in the... Okay. Specifically, how this one works. Uh, Polyglot is an ability. You have a great facility with languages. You may read any language in which you have at least rank one rank. As well, when exposed to a language which, with, with which you aren't familiar, you may roll a formidable cunning test to pick up enough of the tongue to get by. If this test succeeds, you gain one rank in the language for the duration of the encounter. For every two additional degrees on the test, you gain an additional rank. Yeah, so, so yeah, he can I've actually gotta, I've gotta pick up languages. Using it. Mm -hmm. so. But he, he picks up languages, or at least enough to get by for a for a period of time, a Great lot encounter. easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, but for everyone else, if you don't have a at least rank two, you'll or rank four, I think, is reading. Uh, rank three might be able to read like basic stuff, read and write basic things. I'll have to double check. But it's yeah, it you the average person has a rank two in every skill, and the average person cannot read. So. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers that question. Um, um, cool. Okay. Yes. Well, we don't leave for another day or two still if... I need you masters to be worth a damn. Find me something, anything regarding the history. We've got books. Read them. I need something other than what I have. Otherwise, I, I won't. I won't be able to make this happen. <clears throat> we will. Uh, we will keep. Our, uh, we will keep digging. Um, in the meantime, here, take these, um, these texts, and it's just a, kind of a brief history of the house, and description of their sigil, kind of, the basic information, essentially. Um, okay. and for that, I will grant you a bonus dice on, pers uh, really, however you want to use it. I'll say you can use this bonus dice in an intrigue, however you wish to use it, but, you know. The, the bit of background knowledge, the understanding of the house, the information, while not what you've been wanting it to be, um, does give you enough familiarity with the, the people, the names, the places, to try and get an understanding of what you're walking into. So, yeah, I'll grant you a bonus dice that you can use in an intrigue in whatever way you see fit. So it doesn't have to be, you know, an actual persuasion roll. It can be to do whatever it is that you want it to be so okay. um, and that okay. one yeah that's a will, that's just a free bonus dice that you can use for that all right i will gladly take that book with me um all right let me go and find my mother okay um, yes, her quarters uh, are separate from your father's bedchambers. Um, not terribly uncommon in this in in society for lord and lady to have separate bedchambers. It is not necessarily indicative of anything. That's just a, a, a the way that things were done. Um, 
So she's got her own bed chambers and you know the, that she takes care of herself. And you find her in there, just kind of going about her own daily business. Um, you know, keeping the house in order. Um, yes, Martin. Um, come on in. Come on in. Um, I was just finishing up. I don't mean to disturb you, I just... This task Father has set upon me, I, I don't want to fail. But I'm not finding myself with any tools to help me succeed. I mean, all I have is family history, which hasn't been any help, and this book, or what if it's papers or whatever, like telling me a little about the tides. Is there anything you know? Anything that maybe somebody has forgotten or they just don't want to tell me for some reason? I need something to make this work. I don't know anything specific about the tides that might help. We haven't had any sort of regular contact with them over the past decade and a half. But the rumors at court are that their lands have become much more lawless than they used to be. It is a uh, it's become much more dangerous to go off alone in their in their lands. Um, dangerous woods. Um, the city has become run down. Doesn't seem. To, it seems like it's not being managed all that well. And if that turn happened around when they returned home. I don't know what that could mean, but I don't think it's a good sign. I would be cautious when entering their lands. Um, we're sending Sir and for Lauren and, and Thali and Radova with you. Um, they will serve as some protection, but I would say keep your wits about you as well. There's no telling what men may be lurking in dark alleys that see an easy mark and want to make a bit of coin. Well, Mother, you, you know uh, wits are the one thing I abound in. <laughs> yes, yes. You got your father's wits there for sure. I, I would ask them, um, I know I assume she speaks Teroshi. Mm-hmm. She does? I, I know you speak Teroshi. You wouldn't happen to know any Mirish, would you? Let me now pull up her character sheet, because I don't remember what languages she speaks. Let's find out. What languages did I give her? You're going to find somebody in this house eventually. <laughs> I mean, there are so people that speak. Somebody will tell yeah. me something. Yeah, she she speaks Tyroshi, but that's the only other language that she speaks. Let me let I I see what you're going for. Let me see if I can shorten this at all. If I can just quickly glance through some of the other characters and see if any of them knows anything. Um, oh, of course, a character that we have not used at all yet. Um, um, I I don't speak any um, any Mirish, but um, your father's mother does. Um, she has you know, she doesn't wander the halls like she used to. Um, she's quite feeble these days, um, but I'm sure she wouldn't mind a visit from her grandson. Um, and yes, she is. Uh, she's quite good with languages. She knows 
a bit of Tyroshi. I have worked with her on that, and she does know a bit of Mirish as well. Um, and uh, had a quite had quite a hand at reading and writing as well, if I remember correctly. Um, mayhaps you should speak with her about that. Finally, some good news. Thank you, mother. And I leave just just as quick as I came. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Yes, your grandmother whose name is Alicia, the Lady Alicia. She is the um, wife of Lord Victor, or was the wife of Lord Victor before he passed. Um, she is from Dorne. That is where your family gets its Dornish heritage from. It's through her. Um... The Ironborn part of your heritage comes from Lord Victor. So he married Lady Alicia, and the the Dornish colors mixed with the blue from the Iron Islands, the combination there is because of their marriage. Um, she is quite old now at 60. Um, she is feeble, only weighs about 80 pounds, um, and in medieval society, getting to the age of 60 is no small feat. Um, you know, average age of death around here is in your 30s. So, um, people who make it this far, you know, have done some, have done some good. Um, she has long, still, very thin, uh, long white hair, um, and dark, dark blue eyes that still, you know, possess a little bit of that fire in there. Um, and yeah, you find her, um, like I said, she is, you know, feeble, so she's not moving around much. So she pretty much stays in her own quarters most of the time. Um, but she likes to read. That is, that is kind of her favorite pastime. So in after knocking and entering her chambers you see just shelf after shelf after shelf piled with books and you see her in a very comfortable lavish chair sitting down and reading a book yes uh, young martin come in uh yes uh, what can i do for you today uh, it's good to see you What would I call her? What what do people call their grandparents? Um, <laughs> moon, moon, peep, oh, yeah. peep, what, peep, what peep, poop, poop. Uh, <laughs> I, you, grandmama. Yeah. Most what, people uh, live long enough to, to meet uh, those things. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, you could just simply call her grandmother. <laughs> but poop. if you if you want to come up with some goofy uh, name to call your grandmother in this universe, I will just say that you can do it, and whatever name you pick will stick. Within reason. <laughs> um, uh, we'll just uh, we'll just stick with Nana. All right. Nana's good. All right. Sure. Um. Uh, yes, Nana. Um. I don't know if you know this, but I've been tasked by my father to. Traveled to. Oops. Page. Traveled to Arlen and speak with Lord Tide. Uh, perhaps make a deal procuring some lumbers from his land so that we will have it for building a mine. I haven't had any luck finding any sort of information that potentially mend the rift between our houses and the 
only in I see is that Lord Tide's wife speaks or is from is she from Mir? Uh, Mirish? Pentosh. 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 Yeah, she is Pentosh. Is, is Pentoshi. My mother tells me that you speak a little Pentoshi. Oh, um, I speak a little Mirish, but um, I believe I've got some texts here on uh, that are in Pentoshi. Um, and uh, here we can work on uh, getting you down with the, some of the basics. Sure, sure. Um, you would know. Uh, well, you wouldn't know this, but I believe the way that I had this work was. Um, she is also a polyglot, so she also picks up languages quickly. So, yes, you with her will work together and over the next couple days, um, familiarize yourself with the, the fundamentals of Pentoshi. Um, and uh, even, you know, getting a little bit of the maester's help as well, since um, he'll be able to help you find some of the right texts and and kind of figure out you know with context clues how things work and all that um but yeah it is mostly you working with your grandmother trying to give yourself a, a leg up speaking this other language and just familiarizing yourself with traditions and customs of pentos because uh, pentos is one of the free cities um they are called the free cities not because there are no slaves there because <laughs> yeah. there are slaves there everywhere in Essos really um, slavery exists at least in some form they are called the free cities because anyone who owns land is able to vote and the, the, the free peoples of these cities are what make up the voting populace so you know free cities kind of feels it, it can seem kind of as a misnomer to if you're oh, oh, not familiar with it. Um, but yeah, it is. It is. They. It is not saying that they don't have slavery there because they absolutely yeah. do have slavery there. Um, so, and and where you guys are positioned in the step zones, you're familiar with the slave trade while not actively participating in it. Um, yeah. You know, Tyrosh you know, lists all of these cities nearby participate in the slave trade. Um, the kind of one of the bigger centers of slave trade would be Volantis, which is not terribly far from where you guys are located either. Uh, and then kind of farther east, there is Slaver's Bay with Mirin and Yunkai and Astapor those cities are the, you know, kind of central hub for slave trade in Essos as well. Um, okay. Pentos is a bit more of a merchant city, so while it sees its fair share of the slave trade, it also is on the coast, so it's seeing trade from across the Narrow Sea, um, you know, so there's a lot of contact with the, the Westerosi lords and Westerosi merchants. So it's, it's a bit more homogenous than some of the farther east cities. So while there are some unfamiliarities there, there's a lot that feels fairly familiar as well. So it's not as hard to pick up as you would at first guess. Um, that being said, I will say go ahead and um, over the course of this, go ahead and just give yourself a temporary rank in... Pentoshi. Just sort of rank one. Mm hmm. So you can effectively convey, you know, the, the basics back and forth um, because you're spending these two days familiarizing yourself with this. I'm not going to make you roll for it because you're spending a significant amount of time on it and you're a polyglot, so working with another polyglot. Um, all right, that being said, I think. Is there? I, uh, I don't think there's anything else really that needs to be done here <laughs> uh, before no. leaving. I've exhausted um, all, of, all of my possibilities. Yeah. Um, all of my avenues of uh, insight. So very thorough. Yeah. Over the course of the <laughs> next few days, um, you 
the three of you, you know, practice, learn the language, carouse with musicians in town, and prepare yourself for this voyage to Arlen and the another of the islands of the Stepstones. Um, Iron Hand has made a bit more friendly with Sir Darren Vorloren, who is accompanying you as the kind of the knight of the group, kind of adding a bit more legitimacy to the party. Um, and uh, eventually you all meet up back at the castle and gather your belongings and make your way down to the Blue Wharf where you are able to board the ship, which is, is named... Did you... Did, did anyone have a preference on ship names? Nothing that comes to mind. All right. Well... Yeah, my ship. I, I did not think about that. That's all right. We'll just call this one the Grey Swallow, since that would have been the name of the ship that Lord Victor came in on it, and that you know, stands as the sigil of your house. Um, this would be a rebuilt version of that ship, so it is not the original. This is, you know, it, it's been at least 20 years since that ship was here, if not longer. I think it's actually a little longer than that. Um, but you, you get on the Gray Swallow, and you see the, I mean, the sails themselves are not colored at all they're just white sails but the banner of your house is streaming from the mast um it's a single mast galley you know war galley um outfitted for combat prep uh prepared for a very short voyage across the sea um and i can stop us here before we get started with the voyage or we can keep going <laughs> with a you know the the short sea voyage and and carry on from there i know it's a little late and people have work early yeah. in the morning what do you want to do uh what are y'all feeling it's yeah it's already 10 30 uh i've got to be up and at work at seven tomorrow so yeah in, indeed um so we'll just, let's just uh, let's call it there. Sorry, I uh, you know. No, it's all it's all time. good. Ain't a thing. Yeah, yeah. This was a lot of RP, which was kind of nice, honestly. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of dice heavy, or at least we had a, one dice heavy session a couple sessions ago. So yeah, good, some good RP. And you finally met a character that I have been meaning to introduce for a while, that of your grandmother. Um, I and, uh, adore grandma. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, Straight. so yeah, so she's she is also around and like I said, she's a polyglot. So she would be a decent person to know for, you know, anyone seeking knowledge of other languages. Um I tried in uh creating at least your character's ancestors to have their traits kind of funnel down towards you. So you'll notice that some of your things, your your parents or, you know, grandparents have because you have them. So there are some similarities between uh, you and your parents. But yeah, all right. Well, we will, we will call it there. Um, and we will pick up at the beginning of the voyage next time. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys the next time.